Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is the 7th of October. I got back from Florida in the nick of time. That hurricane just hit today. We got back on the 4th. Unfortunately, my poor mom lives there and she lives in a uh, rest home, but it's a very sturdy building. It's a poor concrete uh, type building with uh, block walls internally, so no problem. She should be fine. I think they lost power, however. But the storm is already past Orlando and it's wrecking havoc. It's going to hit the coast of Georgia tonight and the Carolinas later on. Then it's going to go out to sea and make a loop-de-loop, -loop, come back down, and I don't know. No one knows what this crazy storm is going to do. But while I was gone, we received here at the house a replacement photo black ink for the R2000, okay? And the reason for that is that Michael Lee is looking for a black that will not produce that metallic sheen. And it also has to be uh, not so prone to abrasion. A lot of the blacks tend to be and on certain papers that can cause a problem. Even if you get rid of the metallic sheen, then you actually lose the um, strength of the film that the black ink creates and it could you know easily abrade or scratch off so it's a it's a compromise that you have to do when you're creating a photo black and this is done by the big companies as well they actually run tons of tests they have the money to do so because they search, charge so much but anyway so here is the original black here is a second generation of that black and this one, according to him, is great because it removes that metallic sheen that this one had. Now, the uh, gloss optimizer tends to reduce that effect a bit, but not entirely. So this one has a very good non-metallic sheen, but the uh, surface strength of the black ink is not as good as one would wish. And so it could easily abrade. So he came up with a second generation this is uh, revision 3 and this is what I loaded onto the R2000 and then proceeded to run some tests uh oh see what happens when you got a cluttered table all right so before we cause any more mishaps let's get on with the test prints so here is the original one PC ink OEM ICC original PK and as you can see let me see if I can orient this so you can see the gloss and it's very good gloss however if you look at if you were here with me you would be able to see that the areas the dark areas of my little kitty resting piece are a little bit metallic looking there's a difference between this and this area the same thing happens here with the old Bentley. I think that's a Bentley. The windshield, which has a lot less ink in these areas here, they tend to actually uh, differ in reflection color, that metallic sheen that I'm talking about, than the dark areas. But all in all, it is a very, very good print. The black and whites that are supposed to be neutral turn out a little tiny, tiny bit cyan. And that's with the original uh, OEM ICC, which tells me that that ink set is very, very good match to OEM ink. And that is very good, very good news. We'll put this aside for now. So here is the new black version ink. Okay, and here we have the results. And let me go back to the OEM. ICC one and I'm looking for detail on the dark shadows because often what happens when one creates a custom ICC it tends to actually allow the printer to print deeper shadows and so areas that might appear more open on your print made with a uh, OEM ICC will tend to actually almost kind of lose a little bit of that detail but it's basically because it's actually moving some of those tones to a darker portion of the gamut volume and so they appear to be 
as if they are blocked, but really in reality, they're actually expanding your dynamic range on your print and now allowing you to print darker colors in shades and hues and so on. Now the black and white is actually quite neutral now. And so I am very happy about that. So this is with the ver version three PK, okay? And oh, and also uh, PC gloss optimizer. All right, let's put this one over there. And now, remember I said I was gonna test the gloss optimizer from OCP Germany. And so here are the results. Indeed, it is glossier. It is. Now, though it is glossier, it tends to actually add a weird little sheen to areas that what that you would have gloss differential regardless of even the OEM one that I showed you much earlier in another video has uh, gloss differential. This one has a different consistency. This is clear. This is kind of cloudy, but this is actually what OEM gloss optimizer looks like. So it's kind of strange. But anyway, overall, it does produce more gloss. The evenness of the sheen throughout the whole print and I'm printing borderless so that the gloss optimizer is applied beyond the edges of the actual paper and yeah it's wonderful it's truly wonderful and so other than that weird little thing that I see here where the lighter areas kind of have a a different tonality even though they're both neutral they it does impart a slight tonality change now this is, of course, with the version 3 um, black or PK. So let's go back and look at the, this is the most optimized one. This is the one done with OCP to add a little bit more gloss, OCP gloss optimized. So let's go back and look at the OEM ICC one using the original PK. And I'm going to try to see if there are any differences in the black. And again, custom, ICC, and OEM. So these areas here, there's a little bit of detail there that is almost gone here, but it's just a little bit deeper. It's just a little bit deeper. So the black is a bit deeper than the original black, not by much, but it does take away that sheen, that metallic sheen that uh, I was um, not very happy with. And he's done an amazing job in just a few days to uh, actually remove that sheen problem. And so I think this will be the final uh, ink set that will be made available. And whether you use OCP Gloss Optimizer, which by the way, is gonna be very difficult to get. I'm just lucky that I have some. The problem is this, you have to buy it in a cubitainer, something to the effect of like 25 kilogram weight, whatever that is in, in in gallons and of course only a seller or reseller can really afford to house that kind of volume of any ink or any ink component so at this point I'm just going to go back and revert back to the PC gloss optimizers entirely fine um, it does the job and again remember I'm only testing so far on Epson premium luster photo paper all right, so here are my other go-to images that I tend to use a lot. The top one is my crazy sunset with the ridiculous colors in my computer-generated sky and trees. And these are ridiculous levels of saturation for green, blues, and oranges. And here's deep reds right here and so on. And this is OEM ink this is oem gloss optimizer in oem paper and oem profile so everything oem okay so let's just put this here for now and i'm going to go back to the next level this is r2000 with pc ink set and original pk in a custom icc and the reason i did the custom icc is because i was getting a little bit of a shift on the black and white images 
nothing horrible just a little bit of a shift so let's go ahead and compare our crazy blue sky photograph here OEM on top PC with orig original black on the bottom and I have to say that that looks pretty darn good pretty darn good in fact the original OEM everything almost has a little metallic look to some of these shadows and the gloss is not evenly throughout it's not like the Pro 1 the Pro 1 produces perfectly even gloss so does the Pro 10 so the R2000 though it produces wonderfully strong colors that pop and just just grab you um, the gloss optimizer still does not fully uh, cover a any area that may not have um, ink applied to it like such as these areas here so these tend to then vary in glossiness or the luster of the paper actually comes through all their areas are a little bit glossier these areas are not so that imparts that gloss differential actually this one here the one done with the uh, PC inks original PK custom ICC in PC gloss optimizers quite even quite even I like it all right so let's go ahead and uh, look at the sunset now we have the OEM everything beautiful and PC again same conditions as the blue sky print and again this is quite good quite good I see a little bit of a metallic sheen I can having trouble holding these a little bit of a, of a metallic sheen in these areas here but nothing I mean you're not going to be looking at images and, and you know just aiming them all kinds of different angles to the light you're going to hang them on the wall and they're going to be hit by ambient light and uh, you're not going to get that effect that effect is actually forced by me when I try to really examine a print I will go through the extreme and try to find out every every little problem that they may have so you're not really going to do that when you're actually viewing regular prints so again the contrast is there the black is good everything is hunky dory okay let's go ahead and separate the OEM because now I'm going to compare prints done with the original black and the new black okay so here we have our original PC prints made with original ink and then with version 3 black and then these are with uh, OCP gloss optimizer so I did quite a few combinations this is going to be a little bit crazy to keep track of but we'll try to do our best so let's go ahead and look at the famous blue sky and again if I look very carefully in these areas here this area here this area here yeah the blacks are a tiny bit deeper and visibly deeper so now you would go ahead and print some uh, color patches and actually measure them to make sure that you're actually getting the actual accurate value and in uh, dmax or the so-called l or lab uh, value that would be a darker value or lower number uh, so that would tell you that that particular black is actually able to print darker values a black will kind of level off at a certain value and cannot print anything that's actually deeper than that it'll just kind of level off so for instance from black to white you may have the first one or two three steps of a ramp just printing the same level of dark gray whereas another ink might allow you to print every step on that ramp so this is what precision colors is trying to achieve he's trying to come up with a black that is just superior to anything he's so far tested all right so let's go ahead and look at the v3 version 3 black versus original black and we'll have to go down to the bottom here so this is v3 on top and original version on the bottom not much difference in this visually at least from what I can see both produce wonderful uh, images this one's a little bit more um, metallic because it has 
a lot more gloss than the other inks. And so dark colors that use a lot of black tend to be glossier. And so sometimes what happens is that they, they refract fluorescent light. I'm, I actually am lighting myself with a fluorescent uh, studio lamp and that turns tends to add kind of a weird effect to reflections. If I do that and only look through say LEDs or um, incandescent bulbs, you will not see that sheen at all. But I'm forcing the situation, I'm trying to uh, force the situation so that I can see defects that maybe you will not even see. I want to discover every defect this ink may have and so that's why I'm doing that. All right, so again, everything looks beautiful. Original PK here, this guy here, this part of the cloud, it's a little bit darker than this one. A little bit, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more pop to the image. All right, so now comes the ones done with the same ink set, same version three black, except OCP gloss optimizer. So let's go ahead and look at the sunset. And right off the bat, I can see that the OCP is glossier. It's just glossier. And by being glossier, it just adds that extra little bit of extra pop to the image, the way it looks. So, again, it's sad that this gloss optimizer is so difficult to get. Now, I suggested to Precision Colors that maybe he might consider ordering a 25 kilogram cubitainer. The way Arjet Tech, who is the U.S. Uh, distributor for OCP, which is based in Germany, they actually uh, receive container ship loads of ink in barrels. And so when you order something special, you have to kind of get it within that window. They do that every three months. So then it takes about a month to arrive here. And so then the good thing about it is that you don't have to pay shipping from Germany. You actually pay shipping from Colorado. So in the US to your address. And so it tends to be a lot cheaper. They send it by ground, so it's not that cost prohibitive. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to buy a 25 kilogram and then just sell this stuff. But I will let Precision Colors do it. I hope he uh, decides to go this route because this is clearly superior. It's a much superior look. All right, let's look at the crazy blue sky one. Where did I put it at? Right here, custom ICC, original PK. No, that's the wrong one. Version 3 PK, and the same one done with OCP Gloss Optimizer. Again, the same thing. Clearly, more even gloss, although it has a little weird, kind of pinkish sheen. But that's my fluorescent light acting up. If I do that under incandescent bulb lighting, it's not there. All right, so yeah, the gloss optimizer from OCP definitely adds a little bit of extra gloss to the whole evenness of the surface of the image. And so you get a bit of a increase or apparent increase in sharpness, contrast, color saturation, which is great. But don't get me wrong, this is damn good. This is damn good as it stands by itself. So we will see. I hope um, that he considers that. I'm going to send him all of these images. I have a envelope right here ready to be packed with these images. I'm going to send them to him. And hopefully he will be able to um, see on print because he does not have an R2000. And that's the problem. That's why I'm undertaking this little project for him. He does not have an R2000 or an R1900 available at this moment. So this is where we are at. I'm going to go ahead and print some profile patch sheets for him. And then he's going to go ahead and create his a set of great profiles for that ink set. And then we will have that available for us because you remember, this is all free. This is all his his uh, work for the community, all you have to do is buy his inks and you are set up with a multiplicity of profiles for many, many papers in many lighting conditions or viewing conditions, which is very important. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video I'm going to be doing is going to be in the computer. I'm going to discuss a little problem 
setup problem with the um, P800 Pro 3880 Pro 3800 printers that people seem to be having. Two individuals actually posted this problem. And so I'm going to give you the answer in the next video. So thank you once again. Please subscribe and share and like as always. Happy printing everyone. Bye-bye.